Today, we're taking a look at the Friesland. I finally managed to get this ship. This is a ship I've always wanted, mostly because uh, a friend of mine has this as one of his favorite ships in the game, and I hadn't had it, and I haven't been able to try it. Um, but yeah, I was gifted this uh, very kindly by Chief G-Man. Um, he just wanted to uh, give me something back for uh, the video, so big thank you to Chief G-Man for the Friesland. And I must say, the ship is amazing. If you don't have this ship, it is awesome. Um, it will be leaving um, purchase in next patch? No, 10.6, I believe, is when the Dutch cruisers come in. And they want to put this ship in the Dutch line. So instead of just moving all the Frieslands over to the Dutch line, their plan is to remove Friesland from sale, copy it over, call it something different. I think it starts with a G. Um, so it's the exact same ship, carbon copy, just it'll be in the Dutch tree. So you'll still be able to get your hands on it, which is really nice, because this ship is awesome. It is a ton of fun to play this ship, because you get so much utility with this ship. You get probably the best gunboat guns at tier 9. Maybe Mogador, maybe Udaloy, um, but Friesland DPM, uh, the amount of fires you get, it's just insane. Of course, you have to give up torpedoes. That is the one downside of the ship, but if you're someone who maybe struggles to hit torpedoes, there's a few of my friends who it's almost become a bit of a meme that they just never hit their torpedoes. Uh, this could be a good ship because it's balanced completely around guns. You're not hit, you're not expected to hit torpedoes. Um, of course, the other amazing part about this ship is you have American smokes. Of course, the best smoke screens in the game if you're looking for just duration. Um, I would probably argue that British smokes or maybe even Pan-Asian smokes on destroyers are more useful just because they um, don't last as long and they come up quicker, meaning they're more flexible and you get a few more of them as a compensation for the reduced time. But uh, yeah, it's really, really good to have American smokes. I don't think that's a bad thing. It essentially allows me to sit here and farm for two minutes, right? And um, you notice that we were reversing towards this cap, trying to play around this island. This is a great way to have torpedo cover. And uh, just be ready to get away just in case that Riga comes in and radars us, right? You don't really want to commit yourself out into the open of a cap at the beginning of the game. So that's not what we're doing. We're playing it smart. We're playing it safe. And something I have noticed over maybe the four or five games that I've played in Friesland so far is that this ship is almost a second line destroyer. This isn't on the front lines, in my opinion. And that mainly has to do with the concealment. Um, you can, at best, I believe, get this down to 6.4 kilometers concealment. And that's not quite good enough to just hard charge into caps. Um, it's This ship is big and it is slow, okay? So it's not like it's a French destroyer that's hard to hit. You don't have special saturation like a French destroyer. You don't get a heal like a Russian destroyer or um, some of the other um, European DDs like the uh, Smallland and the Holland both get heals. So you can take these unfavorable trades because over time you can heal things back. You get 20,750 health and you're stuck with that for the whole game. Um, so I tend to play it as this kind of backline DD. Of course, there's times where you have to go in front when you're the only destroyer, but if there's another destroyer on my team, I'm trying to play nearby, very close, because my concealment will be only 0.5 kilometers worse than my friendly destroyer. So I can play incredibly close to my friendly DD and be there as gun support for them, right? So our Jutland is radared in the middle of the cap, so I know the Riga's likely going to be shooting him. Um, in fact, the Riga goes down, so it's fine. So I just reverse out here to just gunboat at this uh, Oster. Because there's two DDs here. And in fact, we have a lot of backup. There's a cruiser as well as a Jean Bart pushing up. So this guy has to run away. But it's really good to play this um, second line I've been finding. You can get a ton of range. I'm not sure about the range upgrade um, on the captain. It gets you out to 14-ish kilometers range, but uh, the guns are just so floaty out to there that I might be switching my captain up to not include range. 
It's, uh, it just feels a little bit hard to hit things out there. Of course, sometimes tier 10 games get really campy and you're required to shoot at those ranges, so then I kind of like it. The flexibility is, of course, very nice. If you catch a Bowie in Battleship, it's very easy to hit um, and do a ton of damage. You can see we're not even six minutes into this game and we have 72,000 damage. The damage output of these guns is amazing. Um, of course, I'm leading by zooming out my camera. Uh, on your scroll wheel, of course, maybe tick it out by one or two ticks, um, one or two scrolls of your wheel, and you can get this kind of camera, which I think is a little bit easier to aim with ships with such floaty arcs. I often do that in Atlanta, um, other destroyers as well, if they have floaty arcs or I'm shooting at longer ranges, it's just easier to hit things like this. Um, it's worse for battleships uh, aim though, so if you're in a battleship, I don't suggest doing this because you don't quite have the accuracy. You're not able to pinpoint the Citadel quite as easily, but when you use an HE, it doesn't really matter. You can hit anywhere on the ship and you're going to be guaranteed to do some damage. Either with a full pen or with a fire, because your fire chance is so insane. <laughs> so, Friesland's a great ship. Um, I'm very, very thankful that I got this ship finally. And I've been really, really enjoying it. It's just a different playstyle than I'm used to, honestly. I, uh, I'm so used to having torpedoes. And you saw in yesterday's uh, ZF6 video that I even ran that thing as a torpedo boat for a little bit. Uh, because when I'm in a destroyer, I'm usually trying to spot, contest caps, gain ground um, for my team. Um, it's very valuable as a destroyer to go into areas of the map um, that are open. And all that does is gives your team the confidence that no enemies are there. And even that little bit of confidence can help your team push up and uh, yeah, make it so they don't have to worry about maybe a battleship from stealth pops up and nukes them, that kind of thing. When you know where people are, you can make more informed decisions. And I find destroyers are information gatherers, and I often play them like that. Um, so I don't usually have the crazy damage games, but uh, this game went by really quick and I managed to get a lot of damage in it as well. So. I wanted to just show you um, the power of Friesland guns. This obviously isn't amazing damage for a Friesland. Uh, some of my friends who really love this ship, um, they've, they've done some pretty insane things. Well over 250,000 damage and oh, I think over a, over a thousand shell hits. Um, this was a very quick game. I believe it was around eight minutes or so. And we already got up to near, uh, what, 355 shell hits. That's, uh, pretty fast um, with this ship and it's it's a lot of fun so if you've got the free XP lying around I think this is probably the best ship you can get for free XP at the moment I don't think I'd recommend the a gear um, it's just kind of a weird uh, ship that's not really that tanky and uh, isn't it's not a battleship but it's also not a cruiser it's kind of it's a weird middle ground but Friesland is a really really fun ship to play the consistency on the guns is really just nice to play around with, and um, the captain I'm running is mainly survivability focused. Um, I'm going for a very standard 10 point destroyer commander, right? Preventative maintenance, last stand, survivability expert, concealment. I think that's pretty normal for pretty much every destroyer, uh, almost mandatory skills I would say. I'm taking Superintendent because your Hydro is very useful. Um, I didn't really get to showcase it in this last match, but a 5km Hydro definitely can catch destroyers off guard, protects you from torpedoes, all that good stuff, and the really nice thing about the ship also is the AA. You don't really have to worry about the carrier, because if he comes after you, he's going to lose planes, and generally carriers don't want to come after you first, so being able to play a destroyer that uh, doesn't have to worry as much about the aircraft carriers is much more comfortable. That's one of the reasons I love playing Holland, and Friesland is very similar. The next thing I'm going to get, you can see I have a 19 point commander, I thought was going to be um, Adrenaline Rush, just because you lose HP, you get, you get uh, a damage buff, right? It's a very good skill, but uh, I've thought about removing this um, main battery firing range, my friends have recommended this to me, you get nearly 15 kilometers, but without it, you still have a decent, um, you have decent range, 12.3. It's not even that bad. So part of me thinks I should, uh, part of me thinks I should um, 
move it maybe to Adrenaline Rush and Fearless Brawler. The problem with Fearless Brawler is it doesn't activate when you're in a smoke. You have to be spotted. So you don't get that 10% boost all the time. You only get it when you're open water gunboating. Whereas this 5% boost to your damage is all the time. Or I could do something like extra heavy AP shells and get a 7.5% damage buff to my AP. And you saw how good the AP was against broadsides. And because you're a destroyer, you can get on people's flanks very easily. There's a lot to think about when it comes to getting these commander skills. But I think boosting survivability is the best thing you can really do in a, in a uh, commander build, in my opinion. IFHE, I believe, is not worth it. Yeah, you only get to 25 millimeters. Most cruisers have 30 millimeters these days that you're fighting, so or at least 27. So uh, not much point there. You're still shooting for superstructures, so... I am still working on the build for this ship. Uh, like I said, I'm pretty new to it, so uh, I gotta figure it out. But these are my thoughts on it so far. I think these upgrades are pretty solid. I don't know if I would change any of these. Um, very standard destroyer upgrades, I would say. But uh, yeah, Friesland is a good time. I would definitely recommend it to you if you have free XP lying around. It's a very expensive premium to just buy. Uh, I believe it's near that $100 mark, at least... Uh, at least in Canadian dollars, I believe it's 99 bucks. Um, so not cheap at all. But if you've got the free XP laying around, maybe uh, worth your time. I would definitely recommend getting this for a, a million free XP over getting the um, uh, Japanese tier 10 destroyer, the um, Hayate, for 2 million. I think half pre you're spending half the free XP and you're getting... I would say just a more unique, interesting ship. Hayate is basically just a Japanese gearing. Um, you lose some of the torp power from Shima, but you gain some of the gun power like a gearing. It's... I don't know. I think it's just too expensive. This is a great price for a really strong ship. So, thank you very much for, for watching, and I hope you have a great day.